Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. All right, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your brand new host, Tate, and today we are going to be talking about a lot of news going on in the NFL and and around the league here. We're going to touch on... The NFL's Players Union announcing or notifying the players to prepare, start saving their money for a possible lockout. We're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. We're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott. Along with, we're also going to, as far as talking about the Cowboys, we're going to roll into a little talk about Jason Garrett and the Dallas Cowboys, and then we're going to go around the league and just give you an overall update about what's going on in the world of football. Okay, so we're going to kick things off right off the top because a few days ago, NFL PA Executive Director Demora Smith sent out an email to players and their agents letting them know to start saving their money. And which is kind of surprised because it kind of came out of nowhere. But the reason why he started telling players to save their money is because in this email, the the collective bargaining agreement between the NFL and the players union runs out at the end of at the beginning of uh, the 2021 season and Demore Smith is letting players know that to expect as long as a year lockout so he's letting everyone know in advance on what they need to be saving for and for how long and this is kind of very important because A lot of times when you look at players, their biggest concern when they first come to the league, it's more this whole email really kind of goes to more the younger players, the first players on their first contract, new players coming in the league, because most players tend to blow through that first contract because they're betting on themselves and that there's going to be more contracts to come. But when you look at a possible lockout for a year and no income, you have to be very wise with your money. And when you look at this previous agreement, there is a really good chance that a lockout could happen. And the reason why I say, matter of fact, I say it's a better chance than not that there will be a lockout of some period of time. I don't know about an entire season, I think that's a little posturing on the side of DeMora Smith and the NFLPA. But some type of lockout I could totally see happening. And the biggest reason why that is is because there is a lot of agents and a lot of players that was not happy with this last agreement. As a matter of fact, there are some players and some agents who have said, This is possibly the worst agreement in the history of professional sports, not just the NFL, but all professional sports. There's a lot of people that are not happy, and I think you're going to be looking at a situation where it's going to be very hard for the NFL to go through and have an agreement before the 2021 season. 
Now, there's a bunch of players and there's a bunch of issues where the union and the NFL are kind of very far apart. A couple of them that I have mentioned that sounds kind of important to a lot of the players. The first one is always the guaranteed contracts. That is something that the NFL players and the players union has wanted for a very long time. Baseball has guaranteed contracts. Basketball has guaranteed contracts, but not the NFL. That is something that if I was if I was an NFL player, that would be my number one priority. So, but that's going to be the hardest thing that the NFL is not going to be willing to give up. That's the one issue that could be a major sticking point. But if you wanted to change the NFL uh, and its future, get guaranteed contracts for players. Another issue that's going to be a major sticking point is the power for Roger Goodell. Uh, the Law and Order Commission Commissioner will definitely be under fire. And I think the Players Union is going to want to kind of take some of that power back. They gave them too much power to just hand out fines and penalties. And I think there's going to be a big sticking point on how much power, if any, Roger Goodell has to suspend players. I think the union and players are going to want it to go to an independent arbitrator. That was a major issue the past couple, past two or three years. Haven't heard much about it right now, but once the strike comes on or a possible strike or negotiations start, that is going to be an issue that will come up, especially when you look at situations like Ezekiel Elliott, where there's a lot of people that disagree. Should he have gotten suspended? Should he not have gotten suspended? Having an independent arbitrator come in to rule on decisions and lead and and issue out suspensions or fines or no fines. That is going to be a major sticking point. Another sticking point is the revenue split. How much money will NFL owners get? What percentage of that will go to the players? And then the big issue where I have heard a number of NFL players, former players, have brought this up. And that is the marijuana testing. It has become a lot more accepted in the NFL and around the country that marijuana can be used for pain management. It's becoming the whole stigma of using marijuana. The country's whole f focus on that has diminished. There's a number of other leagues and other sports that do not fine you for use of marijuana. And I could see that being a major issue. With that, when you start looking at that and you say guaranteed contracts, Roger Goodell's power, percentage of the money, marijuana testing, what are the players going to have to give up to get any of these? I'm going to tell you this right now. The NFL is, in, I, in order to get guaranteed contracts, I feel like you're going to have to strike and, I mean, go on an extended strike before the NFL will ever give up the right to let players go and to start giving out guaranteed contracts. That is going to be a sticking, situ a sticking point it has come up for decades and is yet to be. It's undefeated. You do not get a guarantee. The NFL union has yet to win to get a guaranteed contract. And the only way to get that, I think, would be a work stoppage like nothing we've ever seen. And I just don't know 
if when if you're looking at a long extended contract and you're looking at NFL players, that's the reason why Demora Smith is telling players to prepare for an extended lockout. Because in order to get something to get some of these things without giving up a lot in return, players are going to have to be willing to not to go an extended period of time without a paycheck, go an extended period of time without income and without playing. The nice thing about being a football player is because a player's career is so short, a lockout for some players will give some players some the ability to heal up and maybe rejuvenate their career. But giving up those checks, I could see if it went a year or a year and a half, I think you would see a lot of dissension. I think you would see a lot of players crossing that picket line or threatening to decertify the union. I just don't think players are willing to fight and give up a season or two to get everything they want. It is yet to is yet to happen, especially with the fact that owners pockets are way deeper the person that has the bigger bank account, which is always the owner, will always trump the players. The whole concept, big bank takes little bank. When we come back, we're going to go and we're going to touch on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. And Lamar, when he showed up to OTAs, got a little bit of a surprise. Uh... There was also a talk of with the owner. We're talking about how they're going to use Lamar Jackson. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned and we'll be back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. All right, we're back. And in the last segment, we talked about how DeMora Smith has sent out an email to all the agents and players letting them know to start saving their money because when the 2021 season agreement is up there could be an extended lockout as long as over a year so we touched on that and now we're going to go and we're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens and which the first thing that kind of came out is is that Lamar Jackson was kind of surprised when he got to OTAs that they had that the Baltimore Ravens had put in a totally brand new offense, which was a bit of a shocker. And I think he was kind of taken aback by that, kind of kind of wanted a, more of a heads up, but with the way the law, the the rules imply teams can't get a head start although I think I think a lot of teams would like to have to be able to give a head start especially on their quarterback their young quarterback so he was very surprised on the fact that there's a new offense in and uh, there was also an interview with uh, Steve Buscotti in which uh, in which he talked about how they plan on making some changes on how they use Lamar Jackson. 
the Ravens have invested a lot of t- a lot of money and a very high pick. That uh, Lamar Jackson was the thirty second overall pick in last year's draft, and last year. Lamar Jackson ended up setting an NFL record for quarterbacks, rushing 147 times, which passed Bobby Douglas at 141 times, which that record stood since 1972. The big difference is that 147 times was not a complete season. And when you look at the fact that Joe Flacco was the quarterback for them at the beginning of the year and Lamar Jackson kind of came in later in the year to be able to rush more times than Steve Young, Michael Vick, some of the greatest running quarterbacks in history, the new record belongs to Lamar Smith or Lamar Jackson. Sorry about that. Not Lamar Smith. Sorry about that. You cannot sustain a quarterback running the ball 20, 25 times a game. Last season, on average, he averaged 17 carries a game. That is a recipe for disaster. That's part of the reason why Robert Griffin III, their backup quarterback, is so important. Because if you have a situation where your franchise young quarterback goes down because he's carrying the ball 15, 17, 20, 25 times in a game and he gets injured and that's the way your offense is set up, that is a recipe for disaster. You've got to have someone that has a similar skill set. And so I think it was very smart to make sure they re-signed Robert Griffin III, but they are taking more of the approach this year that they're going to run him a lot less, try to develop him into more of a pocket passer with him taking first team reps in the in OTAs and in the off season here. So they're really going to work on trying to develop him into a quality starting quarterback that they're not putting at risk Every time, because right now, the minute that the Baltimore Ravens step on on the field, all eyes are on one person, and that is Lamar Jackson. He's going to either throw the ball or he's going to run the ball, but there's no fear of and and the odds of him throwing. He's not going to throw. Last year, he barely threw. It was pretty much Lamar Jackson run. Lamar Jackson run. Maybe he does a little quick little dump off pass. You have to get the offense, I mean defenses, to be honest. If not, you're gonna they're gonna start crowding the box, they're gonna start blitzing, and you're gonna end up with an injured franchise quarterback, which will set the Baltimore Baltimore Ravens back a very long time. We're gonna take another short break. When we come back. We're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys and two stories that kind of have come out here about the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to talk about Ezekiel Elliott. We're going to talk about uh, Jason Garrett as well. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info.
All right, we're back. We just got done talking about Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens and how Baltimore has put in a brand new offense and how they plan on changing the way they use Lamar Jackson from last year where he set a NFL record with 147 carries. They're going to try to develop him into a more of a passing quarterback and depend less on the run to cut down a risk of injury. Now, speaking of a player that carries the ball a lot and could be carrying the ball all the way to the at least the playoffs, maybe even Super Bowl contention, the Dallas Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott got into a little trouble in the offseason for the, I think, like third year in a row. Last year, he got suspended for six games. This year, he is now being investigated by the NFL. Ezekiel Elliott was at a music festival in Las Vegas, and he got into it with a security guard. He got into the security guard's face. He wouldn't back down. He kept kept kind of bullying him to the point where the security guard actually fell over. Unfortunately for Ezekiel Elliott, it was actually caught on tape. TMZ was able to put it out. And now the NFL, it looks like there's a report that the NFL will start, will actually look into this. Now, when you look at the fact that he already come off a six game suspension, there was a video a few years ago where he was trying to pull up a, a friend's shirt uh, and, and kind of flash her boobs. These are things that if you're the star running back for the Dallas Cowboys, you cannot get into this situation because there's too many eyes on you. Second of all, you can't get into an altercation with a security guard at a music festival when you're coming off of a six game suspension because of the fact that you have already you kind of have a track record now the benefit of the doubt is now out the window so you're looking at a situation where you're not going to get leniency I don't think he's going to get suspended but when the Dallas Cowboys are looking at a Super Bowl run because Dallas will be one of the top teams in the NFC this year. When you're looking at a Super Bowl run, the last thing you want is a situation where your star running back could get suspended or he's just one, th- one incident away from being suspended. Ezekiel Elliott needs to make smarter decisions And also, he needs to get some people around him. One of the things that I noticed on the video is the fact that there was no one coming over to kind of get in Ezekiel Elliott's ear and say, hey, man, let this go. Let it go. Come on. Come with us. Think smart. He needs someone around him that's going to keep him out of trouble. Now, he doesn't really he doesn't seem like a bad guy but where there's smoke there's fire you can't be pulling up even though it was a friend and it was nothing came of it you can't be pulling up a girl's shirt uh you can't be getting suspended for previous instances with ex-girlfriends and you can't be getting in the security guard's face to the point where they're bagging up and stumbling and falling over That is a recipe for disaster. And this rolls into the second part of this story where the Dallas Cowboys will only go as far as Ezekiel Elliott takes them. And the Dallas Cowboys number one goal is to make the Super Bowl. And that's part of the second story. And that is, is that, There is a lot of pressure on Jason Garrett to get to the Super Bowl. It is Super Bowl or bust for the Cowboys. If if 
Jason Garrett does not get to the Super Bowl, there are reports that the Cowboys will replace him this year. They feel like they've given him everything he needed. They got a top flight running back. They got a young, solid quarterback in Dak Prescott. They went out and they traded a first round pick for Amari Cooper. They got the defense under, uh, you know, all locked down. One of the top defenses in the NFL. They went out and did something uh, uncowboy like, and they went out and got Randall Cobb at a at slot at a slot receiver. They went out and brought back Jason Witten. They feel like running back, quarterback, wide receiver, slot receiver, tight end, defense. They have all the makings to make a Super Bowl. The one thing they haven't done is made a change at co- at coach. And that's why there's a lot of pressure to get to the Super Bowl or bust. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Super Bowl bust for the Dallas Cowboys is a very tough thing. First off, there's only one team in the NFC that can make it to the Super Bowl. And there are some really quality teams out there. You're looking at, you got the Rams. You got the Falcons. You got New Orleans. Uh, you got Chicago, who's going to be really uh, a much improved team. You got Green Bay, who's going to be really good. But the number one issue is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. In order to get to the Super Bowl, you need to win the NFC East. And even though I think the Cowboys are one of the better teams in the NFC, maybe one of the top three or four teams in the NFC, I can say the exact same thing about the Philadelphia Eagles. If Carson Wentz is healthy, they are going to be a handful. It is not a guarantee. It's not a gimme that the Cowboys are going to just go through and win the NFC East. And worst thing, worst thing, they're going to host a, a first round playoff game or get a first round by. That is not a guarantee. If that does not happen, though. You have a situation where if, let's say, Philadelphia wins and Dallas is a wild card, they're playing wild card week and they got to play the rest of their playoffs on the road, Dallas will not make it to the Super Bowl. And that would mean the end of the Jason Garrett era. We're going to take a break. When we come back, We're going to talk about a few other things around the league, and then we're going to wrap things up. Stay tuned, and we will be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. All right, we are back. And in the last segment, we talked about Ezekiel Elliott and the fact that the NFL is going to be investigating his situation in which he had at a music festival in Las Vegas. We also talked about the Dallas Cowboys and the fact that Jason Garrett is under a lot of pressure to actually make the Super Bowl. It's pretty much Super Bowl or bust. And so with that and talking about the Dallas Cowboys, we're going to talk about a few things around the league, but we're going to stick with the Dallas Cowboys because of the fact that we're talking the so far during OTAs, you haven't really seen Jason Jason Witten at OTAs. He is there. He is practicing. There hasn't been much video of him out there, but everything that we are hearing is that the players, 
and the team has been super, super happy with Jason and that the Cowboys are being super cautious with Jason. They're not trying to get him to get out there and do too much too early. It's more about, it's kind of like he's on a pitch count. They, they don't want him to burn out before the season even starts. So they're not really having him. He's doing training. He's doing a lot of other things. But when you, when you talk to some of the players, they're saying that the 37 year old tied in future hall of fame tied in is looking the best he has in a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, one player said he looked younger. He looked faster than he's ever seen him. As a matter of fact, he recorded his fastest 20 yard split time of his entire career. So maybe this time off has really helped out Jason in which he's been able to rest up the body. A lot of the injuries, a lot of the Knicks have been able to kind of be healed up. And he's found that fountain of youth and that he has maybe another uh, a quality season at tight end. The Cowboys think they have a Super Bowl run and he's a big part of it. He's a big leader. A lot of the young players can really lean on him. And so I will definitely be keeping an eye out to see how he does. Speaking of keeping an eye out, also around the league, there is... A lot of concern, there are kind of reports saying there's a lot of concern as far as Todd Gurley goes. Right now, he has been getting treatment. He has not been participating in in off-season activities. But there was a report that his knee is not progressing as fast as they would like. There is a big concern because they just signed Todd Gurley to the big loan contract. And the Rams will only go as far as Todd Gurley takes them. Everything with the Rams, it's kind of like the Cowboys. The focal point of their offense goes through Todd Gurley. That's what makes the passing game work. That gives the defense the rest that they need. Without Todd Gurley, the Rams take a major step back. So that is something that we all have to keep an eye on. Another story out there as we're bouncing around the league is that the New York Jets, today is Thursday, will start their general manager interview, their general manager search to find the next guy that's going to be running the team. And so that is something that you'll have to keep your eye on. I'll be keeping my eye out for, so I'll keep you guys posted, but keep a look out there as well because they're, that is the Jets are always front-page news. So that search starts today. They'll be having a few guys come in today, also over the weekend. So hopefully they'll have a new general manager within the next few weeks. Uh Oh, let's talk about, let's move to the world of college football. The first thing is there was a report out linking Urban Meyer to the UFC, USC head coaching job. And this has come up a number of different times. Uh, they've been saying that the coach, the USC's coach has a very short leash and that there is de- definite major interest and having Urban Meyer as the next USC coach. When Urban Meyer was asked about that, he actually kind of pushed back and said he doesn't think he's going to coach. He thinks he could be done with football. It doesn't stop that that information from getting out there and linking him to UFC, the USC position. But right now, Urban is not considering coming back to coaching he thinks he says he thinks he's done speaking of another college football story former Cincinnati Bengals head coach Marvin Lewis longtime coach 
of the Cincinnati Bengals has joined up with a good friend of his, Herm Edwards, at Arizona State University. He's took it, taken a job as special advisor to the staff, kind of like uh, kind of like the eyes and ears, kind of helping advising Herm Edwards and helping rebuild the Arizona State football program. Uh, that's going to be very interesting as well to see how well that works out. And then the last thing I'm going to report before we wrap things up is the Dallas Cowboys. Once again, we're going to talk about the Cowboys because Dallas is all there's, they're always in the news. It's kind of like the Lakers nowadays, the Cowboys, the they're still negotiating an offer has been sent to Dak Prescott. A counter offer has been sent back. And the way it sounds like the big point of contention is the money, of course. The Dallas Cowboys sound like they want to pay about $25 million a year. Dak Prescott and his agent wants to get about 30 It looks like it could be a possibility where they take this year's money, where he's taking on making uh, almost league minimum, and they kind of put all that money together into more of an extension where it averages out to 25 a year as far as an average, but he still gets his 30 million a year. Just they just take the money and then balance it out so that he gets his 30 million like he wants, but Dallas gets their 25 million by taking an average. The goal is right now the Cowboys want before the season start to have Dak Prescott locked in. And I will tell you this. I think it is really wise. Originally, when I was thinking about the Dallas Cowboys and and, Ezekiel, and uh, not Ezekiel, but uh, Dak Prescott, I didn't think he was worth the money. And I said I would not give him $30 million a year. I've gone back on that statement recently and I say sign him and sign him now because the alternative is this. Do you let your you let your franchise quarterback go and draft another quarterback? Well, Dallas is in a win now mode. They're they're not a three, four, five year plan away. They want to win the Super Bowl this year or next year, the latest. So they're all in on Dak Prescott. Uh, so there, you have that. You have that situation. Number two, the number you do not want to have a situation where, let's say Dallas says, okay, we're going to roll another year, and let's say Dak Prescott has a phenomenal year. Let's say they take him to the NFC Championship game or to the Super Bowl. Now, thirty million will not be enough. They're going. Dak's going to want a lot more than thirty million. Right now, you can get Dak Prescott at that twenty-five to thirty million a year, depending on how they work it out. And when you look at the quarterbacks that are coming in, who have contracts coming up, thirty million is going to be a steal. The new, the new gold standard. I say by the end of next year, you'll be looking at forty million dollar quarterbacks, at least thirty-five million dollar quarterbacks. I, I, I'm I'm going to stick more with forty million dollar quarterbacks. That's going to happen sooner than later. At that point, because you've already locked Dak Prescott up for long term, it becomes a very reasonable uh, pay, especially if you can get it at an average of twenty five. Take the take the current money that's owed to him. Maybe even mix in a little bit of if what he would get paid as a as a franchise tag. Mix that all together so it works out to about $25 million a year, but he still stays at that 30 and Dak Prescott is a steal. I say the Dallas Cowboys should sign him and lock him in long term. With that, you have been listening to the GSMC Football Podcast. I am your new host. I hope you enjoyed the show. It will only get better from here. We'll be back to talk more football as more news comes out. To all, have a fantastic.
fantastic night. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program